My name is Mark Morton. I'm the Instructional Program Manager at the Center for Learning and Teaching Through Technology at the University of Waterloo. And I'm going to be making a presentation on a topic with a rather unwieldy title. It is, How Instructors Can Use Hyperlinked Autotext in Microsoft Word to Save Themselves Time While Simultaneously Providing Students with Just-in-Time Learning Resources. And if, after viewing this presentation, you have any questions or thoughts you'd like to share with me, feel free to email me at markmorton at lt3.uwaterloo.ca. And in fact, while I think of it, I will just show you the LT3 website in case you want to use any of the resources that are available there. The address is simply lt3.uwaterloo.ca. Okay, why don't I just jump right into the presentation then, and it has two halves. In the first half, I'm going to demonstrate how I would use hyperlinked autotext, and in the second half, I'm going to demonstrate how you, step-by-step, uh, -step, can create hyperlinked autotext that would be appropriate for the writing assignments in your courses. So we have in front of us an essay by a student. It's on the novel Emma by Jane Austen. And if I were grading this essay, the first thing that I would note here is that there's a problem with the quotation marks around Emma. Emma is a novel, so it should be italicized. And what I would do, therefore, is I would begin to type the shortcut that I previously created and linked to some auto text. So the shortcut was the word title. You'll see after typing the first four letters of the word title, a little balloon appears. And that means that Microsoft Word is guessing that I want to insert uh, auto text at this point. And it has guessed right. I do. So I don't need to type anything further. I just need to click Enter. And the complete auto text passage appears. And it identifies for the student the error quickly makes a distinction between when you use italics, when you use quotation marks, but then uh, it also provides a hyperlink here. So I think this is important or valuable for two reasons. First of all, it has saved me as the instructor a lot of keystrokes. I had to type three or four letters instead of two complete sentences. And second of all, the hyperlink allows a student, as he or she is reviewing the comments or corrections or edits that you have put on the writing assignment allows that student to immediately, instantly uh, go to a web resource that would provide him or her with uh, an explanation uh, of the error or misunderstanding or infelicity and, and guidance on how to avoid it. So that uh, provides the kind of just-in-time teaching. As the student is looking at the essay, she is a mere click away from getting detailed assistance about the problem. I'm going to give you a couple of other examples here. Let's just begin to read the opening sentence. Emma does, as Charlotte Bronte observes, quite perfectly present, quote, the lives of genteel English people curiously well, unquote. However, it is not a novel bereft of passion. You'll note that here is another error known as a comma splice. Uh, it's one that appears many, many, many times. I've typed the phrase comma splice thousands of times in my teaching career. So I begin to type the shortcut, and again I can just press enter, and the hyperlinked auto text appears. Same kind of thing here. We note that the student has used a quotation but hasn't cited it at all, and so there's a problem with citation, so I insert the auto text there. Again, it appears, and it's hyperlinked. And then finally, over here there's a spelling error, so same thing. Each of these is linked to a different kind of web resource, so that's why I want to go through each one in turn. I'm going to start with the comma splice one, so I hold down control and I click it, and it will open up my web browser and it will take me to a web page that I created some years ago actually about comma splices, explaining what they are and how to avoid them. So this is a web resource that I created. In contrast, if we go over to this one for citation error, click it, 
and it will open up the web browser and take me to another web page but this isn't one that I created this is one that uh, someone else created in fact it was Tristan Connolly in the Department of English over at St. Jerome's and rather than creating the page myself I simply found one that was appropriate and excellent and so I linked to it here the spelling error if we click on that you'll see that we are taken to Merriam-Webster online so it's the complete dictionary that uh, a student can be directed to in order to find out how the uh, word is correctly spelled and finally here if I click on this yet another kind of web resource you'll see a little window has popped up and it's asking the student whether he or she wants to download a program in this case it's a program uh, an interactive program which will help the student figure out the intricacies of MLA style. I'm not going to download that right now because that's not the focus of, of this presentation so I will just click cancel and really what I'm trying to do by showing these four different kinds of web resources is just to emphasize the range of things that can be linked to via these hyperlinked bits of auto text. You could even link to an audio file, to an mp3 file for instance. Um, one more example, maybe. So far, we've been using examples that are appropriate for an English essay, but uh, assume for a moment that this is, let's say, a writing assignment for an anatomy course. The instructor might notice that the students are encountering the same misunderstanding or, or manifesting the same misunderstanding again and again. So what the instructor might do in that case is first of all find a web resource that addresses that misunderstanding or create one and then create a hyperlinked auto text that will allow the instructor to very easily insert at the appropriate place the link to the web resource. So for instance um, I will type another shortcut here and this auto text appears click here to review bone physiology and in fact I will click here because it demonstrates another kind of web resource and what opens up is a page that will take the student to a learning object and this is a learning object that re resides in Merlot. Merlot has thousands of learning objects. It is a repository of learning objects, of peer-reviewed learning objects, and the student can work through this particular learning object by clicking on here and uh, get up to speed on you know, that aspect of bone physiology or osteoporosis. Okay, so that is essentially the first half of what I want to want to do in this presentation, and just to sort of sum up that first half, I think the power of what I'm suggesting is twofold. First of all, you can use auto text in the way that it is normally used to take a long passage and have Microsoft Word insert it by you simply typing a couple, well, three or four uh, keystrokes. And you could have the passage that gets inserted be very long. For instance, what I uh, would often do when I was uh, grading my students' essays is I would create um, a paragraph-long comment that I would put, that I would insert at the end of every essay. It was sort of generic comments on how the essays overall seem to be and particular strengths and weaknesses that I saw in the class as a whole. And I would simply type my shortcut and that entire paragraph would appear at the end of, of the essay. And the other thing is this just-in-time approach to providing learning resources for students. The student receives the essay back from you, you have made comments on it, and as he or she is looking at the essay, uh, he or she can click on the web resource and instantly, or in other words, just-in-time, in a, in a just-in-time manner, he or she can be taken to the web resource that will uh, allow him to improve. Uh, I think the sad truth is that if the student doesn't do it then and there, then the essay gets put into the drawer at home and it never gets looked at again. So the student probably does not go to the web resource unless it is provided in a very direct, immediate, just-in-time kind of way. Okay, the next half of this presentation is me showing you how to do this yourself and I've essentially just created a blank page here and 
what you do first of all is you write the passage that you want to appear as auto text. So let's say I write this is a sentence fragment. Okay. Uh, what I would then do is I want this to appear in the student's essay in a in a color that will be very easy to see. So I'm going to put it in a red font. I might even uh, oops, it was bolded. I, I will even bold it uh, so that it really stands out. Then I create the hyperlink, and to do that, you uh, right, no, sorry, left click your mouse, and then just pull it over the part of the passage that you want to be the hyperlink. Then go up to insert, then go down to hyperlink right there. A little window opens up. It says address here, and this is where you would type the address, the URL of the web resource that you want to link to. Rather than do that though, I am just going to open it up in my web browser and copy it from the address bar. There. I go back to the box in Microsoft Word, click there. I'm going to press Control V. That pastes it. And I click OK. So there the hyperlink has been created. The next thing that we have to do is we have to now turn this into auto text. We have to provide a, a shortcut for it. So we again highlight it by dragging across it as we hold down the left mouse button. Go to insert again just as before but this time we go to auto text and over here and click new. And you can call this anything you want. Um, that you can you can create any name for the shortcut that you want. I would suggest uh, give it a name that will be memorable to you. So I'm just going to call it sentence fragment. Or you could call it SF or something like that. I, I believe that would be just as, as good. Click OK and that's it. The auto text hyperlink has been created. Let's just test it out. So I begin to type uh, sentence fragment, the shortcut, the little balloon pops up, I press enter, there it is, and now I'm going to test it out, make sure that the hyperlink is working, and there it is, it works. So, I would suggest that what you would then do is you would create similar uh, hyperlinked auto text entries for errors or misunderstandings that seem to recur in your students' writing assignments. Uh, they might be unique to each course. Uh, some, of course, would be uh, across courses. In any event, you create a big list of that, of, of those auto texts and uh, hyperlinked auto texts, and then uh, once you've done that, you can simply begin to grade your students' essays, and it should go much more quickly, and the students should profit from it because they'll be instantly directed to those web resources. Just a couple other things I might notice. Um, I think it's important, I think I mentioned this before, but when you are creating the auto text entry, it's not a bad idea to create it in a different color so that it really stands out when it appears in the student's essay. And this also reminds me of another feature of Microsoft Word that is powerful when used in conjunction with the hyperlinked auto text and it is called the track changes feature. So I'm just going to go back to the essay again and uh, track changes I believe is under tools. There we are. Track changes. I've turned that on. So now when I type something it will automatically appear in red. Um, this is an unclear sentence, uh, something like that, a comment like that. So it stands out for the student and it also allows me the track changes feature. If I delete something, it puts a, a strikeout bar through it so that the student can see that I am suggesting that those words be deleted um, rather than simply making the words vanish, which uh, the student obviously would, would probably not notice. It also has this capability that if a student or a colleague, let's say that you are editing his or her essay, um, receives the marked up uh, article from you. Uh, he or she can right click and can either accept the deletion just by clicking that or reject it. Let's reject it. 
and it goes back to what it was. So this can be a powerful thing to use in conjunction with the hyperlinked auto text. I think if you do this, if you have your students email their essays to you in Microsoft Word format and you create hyperlinked auto text and at the same time you also use the track changes feature of Microsoft Word, it will save you time and it will also assist your students in finding the web resources that they need in order to improve their performance.